we were just talking about memories and our fabulous family. And this is another one of our favorite, fam family favourite hours. Get the teeth in. Um, and it's Craft Along time. So if you've got your crochet kit all ready for the Craft Along, make sure it's with you right now because we're about to start in the next couple of minutes. If you haven't got yours already, remember this is a three-week Craft Along. Um, so you can still order the kit, which will see you through all three of the weeks. You can catch up on this week's on Rewind, of course. We'll dispatch your kit on Monday, ready for next Thursday at 9 o'clock for week two, and then the following Thursday at 9 o'clock for week three. So we are making a fabulous crochet drawstring bag. Um, so we, you will get the pattern, which is one of Catherine's patterns. We'll see Catherine in a moment. Hello, Catherine. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. hello uh, she's going to uh, teach us and uh, talk us through everything we do need to do to make this drawstring bag um, so you'll get the yarn and you'll get the pattern the yarns may vary very slightly in color but this is what we will be making you'll also get a crochet hook in your kit too and it's a gorgeous little drawstring bag so without further ado I'm going to sit down over there and I'm <laughs> going to hand you over to this very talented lady over here, our very own Catherine. Ah, oh, thank you, Derek. Do you know, I've been so looking forward to this, so do sit comfortably. Um, what I will say is, if there's anybody out, if the crochet police are out there, you're going to have a whale of a time tonight because, do you know, they, I always say there is not a wrong and there is not a right. You do what is comfortable to you and I hope I can get that across. Now, we are hoping to pick up on lots of new viewers here, not just that, but people that have never tried crochet before. They're looking for a new craft. If you do have any questions, please do email in. Of course, it's uh, studio at thecraftstore.com and we'll try our very, very best to answer those questions. Now... We've been very, very busy on the kits, actually. So the initial yarn has gone, so you'll get various different yarns. If you're ordering now, we can't say exactly what colour you're going to get, but it doesn't matter. Take this as a practice piece. Take this as something... You're starting a new journey. You're learning a new craft. Now, you will, in your kit, have got some yarn. If you've already got this, this is, of course, you will also have your crochet hook. Now, mine is different simply because I've brought my own with me. We have got some for sale on the website as well. Uh, they look very much like this, actually. But it doesn't matter whether yours looks like mine or not. You're still going to use the hook that is in your kit just to get going. Now, what I want to cover are a number of things this hour. In particular, something that I've had as feedback from people is that they've, they've watched maybe YouTube videos or they've watched tutorials. They can pick up stitches, but they can't read a pattern. And that's quite important because, of course, if you've got a pattern to follow, you need to be able to read it. So we're going to touch on that as well. Now, if we just go to the pattern initially, you will see on your instructions that the very first, the very first instruction is your drawstring. We're not starting with the base of the bag. We're not starting with the bag itself. We're starting with a simple drawstring. And the reason I've done that is simply because it's the very, very basic stitch that you're going to start with. And I do, I will, I do apologize for looking at you over the top of my glasses. I need these for close up, not far away. Now, my yarn might look a little bit different to yours. It doesn't matter. And if you want to recreate this pattern with a different yarn, you can do. You can do that, of course, with a thicker yarn and a larger hook. The thicker the yarn, the bigger the hook that you will use, the larger the actual results. So you should have a four millimeter hook in your kit. Now, I have got the, the pattern here because we're seeing drawstring, chain, 150 stitches now that straight away sounds a little bit daunting you think 150 stitches I've never done this before but actually that's very simple a chain stitch is a basic stitch I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit and bring the yarn in so to begin with we're going to do a very simple slip knot now there's different ways of doing a slip knot the way I do it is like this. And I've got to say, I am right-handed as well. I know Derek's left-handed, so I'd be interested to see how he gets on. If there's anybody out there that is left-handed, let me know how you get on as well. Now, I'm taking the tail of the yarn and I'm just forming a little loop there. Okay, I'm going to take that tail of the yarn and I'm going to wrap it around. Let me just grab that loop there. It might be a little bit easier if I grab that in my finger and thumb. So I'm going to take the tail end I'm going to wrap it around, so I've formed another little loop. It's gone all the way around, and I'm going to put the tail through the loop that I've just created as I've wrapped it around. And what you've got there is your slip knot. 
I will do this again, but when I put my hook in there and I pull on the length of yarn, you can see how that's going to tighten up on the hook. We'll do that again. So remember I'm right-handed. Take the tail of the yarn, make a loop. Hold that in your finger and thumb with the tail of the yarn. Doesn't matter if it's a bit longer than mine. In fact, I will elongate that a little bit just so you can see it easy, more easily. Wrap that around the hoop, not too, light, not too tightly, and then thread through the loop that you've just made. So the tail end through that loop. There you can just pull on the yarn, put your hook in there and pull on the main length of the yarn. Shall we do it one more time, just in case? Right, we have got time to do this. You will get homework as well. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell you that right at the beginning, did I? Let's do this one more time. So, yarn. If you're left-handed, you'll do it the opposite way around to me. So I'm holding the loop in my finger and thumb that I've just created with the tail end. Because I'm holding that in my left hand, the tail end is facing to the right. I'm going to take that tail end just wrap it around so I've got a very loose second loop. You can actually feed the actual end of that yarn through. You don't need any needles to do this, but you just want to loop it through. That will then form the slip knot. There you can see the slip knot. This is a knot bit. It's called a slip knot because when I put the hook in there and pull on the main yarn tail, then that's going to pull that around the hook. Now, Hopefully that's enough for you to get that. If you've never done a slip knot before, hopefully you've achieved that. <laughs> now, what we don't want, you can see straight away, I can make that loose, I can make it tight. You know, you can move that around. You don't want this really, really tight. Now, tension on your yarn, when you hold your yarn, becomes very important when you start to make your proper projects. What I am going to say to you with the drawstring bag, this is a practice piece, this is to learn the basics. Do not worry too much about your tension. If you find that you've, it's a little bit wobbly looking, if you've got larger holes in the stitches, if it's not looking perfect, don't worry about that. It's more important to get the stitches right. So we're going to do the chain now. Now it does say 150. Now what you will find, this is the lovely thing about crochet. You will find that normally, unless it's Tunisian crochet, and I'm not going to go into that now because it's something completely different, you will end up with one hoop on your, on your hook when you finish. So you can put this down, pick it up at another time and continue. You're not worrying about dropping lots of stitches. Yes, you can create beautiful patterns, you can change colours, you can do lots of different things, but we're sticking with the basics at the moment. Now, I will come back to tension a little bit, simply because the way you hold your yarn will create different tensions. Now, there are many different ways of holding yarn. You can look online, you will find people that say, this is how you should do it. You know, we do have yarn holders on the uh, show, actually. I've never even seen these, actually. But we have got them. Oh, the yarn holder here is actually, I know which one this one is. This is to put your yarn ball on rather than, you can get rings and things that you can put on your finger, but you don't need it. Now, I'm going to show you the way that I hold the yarn. There are many different ways, and I'll explain why I hold the yarn in this particular way. There are people, and I don't think she'll mind me mentioning a name. Lou Sims, we were chatting earlier. She can crochet, but she crochets like she knits. So when you knit, you kind of wrap the yarn around your needles. If you find that more comfortable, do it that way. Now, as I say, I'm right-handed. So before we start the chain itself, I'm going to show you how I hold the, the yarn myself and why I do that. So I would hold the hook in my right hand, being right-handed. I've got the little tail the tail end there, which I'm just going to grip for a moment in between my, my thumb and my hands. And I'm going to take the yarn across, if I show you from the top, across three fingers. Now I actually then take the yarn and wrap it around my little finger. And I'll show you why I do that. Okay, I'm going to do that again. So I'm holding the hook. If, at this point, if you're right-handed, it doesn't matter if you're actually gripping the hook in your left hand just to wrap the yarn around. So take the main end of the yarn, so the, the yarn where it's attached to the ball, take that piece, I'm going to put that across my three fingers, okay? And then I'm going to take that from underneath my little finger 
and around. As I say, there are different ways of doing this. This is my way. We'll do this one more time, then I'll explain why I'm doing this. Okay, so let's do that again. For the moment, I'm holding the hook in my left hand. Here's my ball of yarn. So the main length of yarn that's attached to the ball, I'm going to take across my three fingers, my first, second, third finger. Then I'm going to take the same length of yarn and wrap it from underneath the little finger over the top. Now, when I've got that, obviously I'm going to hold then the crochet hook in my right hand to crochet. If I just explain why I do this, when you're working and your tension isn't correct, it's usually because your yarn is too loose. Now, if I just pull on this, you can see how that is working around my little finger. I can go the other way as well. I can pull that back. That will allow the yarn to move but without it really, really sort of running away with itself. And if I close those fingers up a little bit, it kind of locks the yarn in position. Now you might find that a lot of people, when they're crocheting, you'll see this first finger stick up in the air a little bit. You won't see that with me. So as I say, have a look at, at YouTube channel, have a look at those different tutorials, see what works best for you. There's a reason why I hold the yarn this way, which I'll come back to, but at this point, we are going to start doing that chain stitch. If you're finding any difficulty and you want to wrap it around like you're knitting, that's entirely up to you. If you've never knitted, we've got another crochet, uh, craft we've got another craft along coming up on Saturday for that. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we've got the hoop on the hook, so this is where the slip knot is. You can see that's not particularly tight there. If I want to tighten it up, I certainly can do. But all I'm going to do now is where the yarn is going across my finger, I'm going to go underneath with the hook and wrap it round. I'm then going to pull through that yarn through that slip knot that we've got already on the hook. Okay. I'm just going to undo that so I can show you that again. Okay, we'll probably do this three times again. So let me just get that yarn in position. Just tighten that up a little bit. So I'm holding on to the tail end in between my thumb and finger. I've got the one hoop on my hook. I'm going to take that hook underneath the yarn. So it's wrapped around there and simply just pull that through the loop. If you can't get it through the loop, loosen off your, your slip stitch. That's all it is. You've just created, if you're following me, your first chain stitch. So all you need to do now is repeat that. So we'll go under the yarn again, through the loop. And if you're struggling to get it through that loop, your tension is a little bit tight, so just loosen it off a little bit. Don't worry if it's too loose. And we're just going to repeat this process. Now it does say in the pattern, 150 stitches. To be quite honest with you, if you lose count at this stage, do not worry. It looks like a little plait. That's what it looks like. Now, if you do lose a stitch at any point, let's, let's say, because you will find it will happen, you might lose that stitch. It's just a case of hooking that hook back in there, put it back in the stitch. If you lose the stitch and it unravels a little bit, I've just pulled that undone on purpose. All you're going to be left with is one stitch so you can just put your hook back in there okay so chain stitch is that is all it is it is literally just wrapping around the hoop and pulling through the loop so i'm going a little bit faster there just to sort of increase that a little bit now i did mention homework because we've got 150 stitches to do here, what we can do, because you're going to reuse this hook for another purpose in a second, you can just take that hook out of there, pull that loop a little bit bigger, put that down, and for your homework, you can just go back with your, your hook, pull that stitch tight, and you're off again. So it's very easy to pick this up and put it down. Now, I will let you into a little secret. Katie, our producer, has never crocheted before. I left her some yarn and a hook in the gallery and she's following along, she's crafting along and she's doing it. And I've just heard this out, I'm so pleased because she's saying, she's saying she's loving it already. She's enjoying it already and she's never done it before. If anybody is lost already, please let me know. Please email in, let me know. We can always go through this again, okay? 
So that is your basic chain stitch. Something to explain about chain as well. Not only can you make long lengths, and our Janice is perfect at this, she made a two metre rule out of chain stitch. Uh, just kept going and kept going until it was two metres long. You will also use what we call a foundation chain stitch, where you then stitch into the stitches that you've just made. We're not going to do that during this craft along. We're simply going to use the individual chain stitches to create the drawstring for the bag. That's it, you're away with it already. Now I've purposely made that a little bit loose, a little bit uneven, so it makes anybody that feels, you know, at home, if you're getting it a little bit uneven, it makes you feel a little bit better. Okay, now I am going to unpull mine simply because I'm going to reuse this yarn for the next item. At home, you don't need to do that. Now what I should have said at the beginning is you've got two different colours of yarn, whichever one you've started with, it doesn't matter. You're now going to change yarn colour. So it doesn't matter which way you get them round. The drawstring is going to be the opposite colour to what you're going to use for the bag base itself. And that's where we're going next. This is where it starts to get really interesting. So take off your hook because you're going to use it. Open out that hook, that loop a little bit. Put your yarn to one side. You can continue with those 150 stitches as your homework. OK, I will show you how to cast off a little bit later as well. So you're putting yours to one side. I'm going to continue. So I am going to unpull that. So if anybody needs that repeating at any time, then I can show you that if we've got time during this hour. Now I'm going to bring the pattern back in because this is where it gets really, really interesting. Because if you're reading the pattern and if you don't know how to read patterns, I've tried to break this down a little bit to explain it. The bag, we start at the base and we work upwards to the top frill. So the top frill is the last part of the bag you will make. You will start with the very, very centre of the base. Now I'll see if I can get the bag in, um, over here with me so I can show you exactly what we're doing. Now it says, instruction number one, make a magic circle and make six double crochet stitches. Then in brackets, you've got a six and a DC. Now, just to explain a little bit about patterns, obviously at the moment, if you're new to this, you don't know what a magic circle is, so we're going to go through that. You are going to use double crochet stitches throughout the base of this bag. Now, where it says six double crochet stitches, to abbreviate that, that is exactly what you've got in the bracket. So that's your abbreviation. So what I've actually done for you here is given you the full explanation and the abbreviation. Now, of course, we're going to do this. What you will find at the end of the row, in more brackets, it will tell you how many stitches you should have on that row. So the first row we're going to do, you should end up with six stitches. Second row, you'll end up with 12 stitches. So, but we're not going to skip ahead too much. I do apologise if my table's rocking a little bit. It is, um, it is wobbling a little bit. So the magic circle, this can be a tricky one when you get going, but it's important. But I've got a little cheat or two to show you as well. Now, again, when it comes to the chain stitch or the, the, you know, the stitches holding the yarn, all those different things, there are different alternatives. Now, for the magic circle, it's very different to a slip stitch. It kind of works in the same way, but the process is very, very different. Now, again, I am right-handed. I will keep repeating that. And I'm going to show you my way of doing the magic circle. So grab your yarn, you will have changed colour now, everybody at home, using your second colour now. Grab your yarn. Now there, there are a couple of different ways of doing this that look very similar. My way, I'm going to form a cross over the top of my two fingers. There is a way where you'll see two parallel lines. I'll try and show you both, but this is the way that I do it. So I'm holding the tail, the loose end, in between finger and thumb. I'm going to use my first two fingers to create this magic circle. So I'm going to go across my fingers and I am going diagonally. Again, this is the way that I personally choose to do it. I'm going to go underneath my fingers. So you're just wrapping it around. And when I bring it back up, I'm going to make a cross on the top. Don't make that too tight. I'll do that again. So I'm holding in my thumb and my first finger the tail end I'm going to take the yarn end that's attached to the ball, cross it over 
diagonally over my two fingers there. Underneath, I'm going right underneath those two fingers and I'm going to cross over again. So I've, I have actually formed a cross on the top of those two fingers. Now I'm just going to grip the yarn in between my finger and thumb again there. Okay, so don't make that too tight. You're going to slip this off your fingers in a second. Get your crochet hook. I'm going to go underneath the cross with the crochet hook. And I'm going to grab the yarn that is on the left hand side to me. I'm right handed, remember. So there's two ways you can do this. You can go right underneath and you can grab that and pull it through, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm now pulling that thread through under the yarn that crossed on the right hand side. Now, if you find it easy to take this off your fingers for the next bit, do so. Now, I'm going back with that hook and picking up the yarn that is on the left again. I will repeat this, I will repeat this, okay? So, let's do that again, because make it clear. Hold the loose end in your thumb and forefinger. So the long length of yarn is attached to my ball of yarn, of course. I'm going to go over those two fingers, slightly diagonally, wrap it right round, going under the fingers and go over the top and then grip that yarn. So you've got both bits underneath. Take the hook. I'm coming in from the right because I'm right-handed. I'm going to go under the cross and catch hold of the yarn that's to the left. Okay, pull it through. That same piece of yarn that I've just pulled through, I'm going to go back. So now the hook is crossing over the top and picking it up. Okay, I am going to do this in a different way that, that might be a little bit easier. I'm now going to feed through a little bit like the chain stitch. I'm going to pull that yarn through the loop. Now, if you find it easy to take that off your fingers as you do that, you can do that. Okay, now what you've got there, it is very much like a slip stitch because if I pull on the loose end, you can see that that is actually going to make that loop smaller. Now I'm not going to pull it too tight because I want to crochet into this. You will also find that you've got a double thickness of yarn there. It looks so it's crossed over. That is what you want. You don't want to see, you shouldn't see a, th a single loop of yarn. And when you start stitching, you're going to work over both those thicknesses. Now, I am going to do this again, but I'm going to show you another way as well of how to do this. Now, there is another way you can do a magic circle. Then there's a, cheat, a complete cheats way. So if you're really, really stuck, really stuck, do, of course, um, use the cheats way. Do what's easiest for you. Do you know, we're getting emails in already. You must be following me because you're saying, I've struggled with the magic circle and I've just got that. Now, this is a new way to me. I've been practicing with different ways of finding out how to do magic circles to try and sort of take the complications out of it. Now, this one I haven't done many times, but so let's hope I get it right now. So this, honestly, if you've just managed it, if you've managed the magic circle, don't, don't pull it out. Keep it. Keep it. We'll come back to it. This is for those that couldn't get it. This is another way. Or if you want to use a separate piece of yarn and try it, you can do it. So I'm taking that end of yarn again. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to wrap, I'm going to hold it in my finger and fourth, uh, my finger and first finger again there. And I'm actually going to wrap this around one finger and cross it over. And then I'm going to take that yarn and thread it in between my third finger and my little finger. It's just so it grips it. Okay. You don't want that cross too tight. I'm then going to go in under the cross pick up the yarn that is now going across my fingers, pull it through the loop, but we're going to do a stitch. Remember the chain stitch, go under the yarn and pull it through that little loop that you've just made. So you've actually created, in essence, a chain stitch there. Then you can slide that off your finger. That will also give you a loop that when I pull on the little end that's not attached to the ball of yarn, it should slide. There you can see it sliding. So that is another way that you can do the magic loop. Okay. Now a third way, and this is the cheats way, but you know what? We don't mind if you cheat. 
we're going to actually create two chain stitches. So we're back to the very beginning of where we started. So we're going to do that, uh, that slip stitch. That's what we're going to do. So we can repeat that one again now. So me being right-handed, I'm going to make a little loop in the yarn. If you've cracked it with the magic circle again, don't worry about pulling it out. We'll work with it. Uh, but this time, for those that can't crack it, we're making that loop. We're going to take the tail around that loop. We're going to thread through the loop that we've just created to form our slip stitch. Put your crochet hook into the loop. Don't pull it too tight, but pull that so you've got that loop around that is acting like a stitch. I'm now going to take the yarn around my fingers. Remember, I go over the three fingers and around the little finger. If that's not comfortable for you, just wrap it around your fingers. I'm now going to do two chain stitches. So we're back with the, with the same method as the drawstring. Yeah, so you go in underneath the yarn and you're pulling it through that hook. We're going to do two stitches. So two chains, that is all you've got there. Now I'm purposely keeping this quite loose so you can see the gaps in between the stitches. If I just very briefly bring back in the instructions because I want to show you the next part of line number one. So we, we've either just made the magic circle or if you're doing the cheats way we're still on that bit. But it does say make six double crochet stitches into your circle. So because I've just done the cheats way, I'm going to do this first and I'm gonna go back and make a magic circle. So those that are sat waiting can continue in that manner. So if you're doing it the cheats way, you've just created two chain stitches. Now, if we count away from the hook, the first stitch is this one. So the stitch that's closest to the hook, I've left it loose so you can see the hole in the center. The first stitch that you made is this one here. Now, if you were reading instructions, it would probably say work in the second chain from the hook. So it sounds a little bit backwards, but it's not. So although it's the first stitch we made, this is the hook. So if we count backwards, one, two, that is the second chain from the hook. You can actually create your stitches in that stitch rather than doing the magic circle. Now on the instructions it says, make six double crochet stitches. We'll show you the details there. Let me just bring that down so you can see it. Six double crochet stitches, abbreviated as six DC. DC stands for double crochet. Now there's something else I will mention at some point. I'm not going to do it right at this minute because it might confuse things until we get going, but there's a difference between UK and US terms, I will come back to that. But we're working in UK terms. So let me just take the hook out of there. We've got the two chain stitches. Remember, this is still the cheats way. We're going into that second chain from the hook, or in other words, it's the first stitch that you made. You're going through it, you are picking up the yarn, you're pulling it through that stitch, so you've now got two loops on your hook. You are about to form your first double crochet. You then go back to the yarn, pick it up with your hook, and you draw that through both loops. That is your double crochet. You've just made your first stitch. You're ending up again with one loop on your hook. Because the instructions say six double crochet, we need to do this another five times. So you're going to repeat, you've got that one stitch on your hook, you're going to go back into the same place that you've just been, the same stitch that you've just been in. You're going to pick up the yarn, draw it through that stitch. So you've got the same stitch. So you've got the two hoops again. You're going to go under the yarn and you're going to pick that up and pull it through both stitches. You've now formed your second double crochet. Okay. Katie seems like she's getting on well. I'm really pleased about that. So we'll repeat that again. So you've got the one stitch, you're going back into the same hole, it's the same stitch, all the way through, pick up the yarn with your hook, pull it through the hole, which is your stitch. So you've got your two stitches on the hook, yarn around again, and you draw it through both loops together. So we've now got three double crochet. Now, for those that are doing the cheats way, you've got three more stitches to do. 
for those that are doing a proper magic circle, I'm going to unpull mine and recreate my magic circle and we're going to do the same process but with the magic circle. So I'm going to recreate that. I've formed that cross that I did show you previously. I'm going to go in with the hook, pull through that loop. Let me just do that again, actually, because I'm kind of doing that a little bit different to what I normally do. Pick up that stitch there. Now you can either draw straight through, or I did say if you find it easier, take it off your fingers to draw that through. Those of you that are sat waiting have already formed that loop, that magic circle. We are now about to do the double crochet as well. So being right-handed, I'm now going to wrap the yarn around my hand so I'm ready to crochet. Crochet hook in my right hand. Don't pull the loop too tightly at this point. If you've pulled it too tightly, you can loosen it off. You should have free movement with that loop. So just pull it off. Now you can see the loop around my hook there is very, very loose. This is where you'll find that once you get going, if your tension is very loose, it's because you've got too much yarn feeding across your hand there. So this is where I find it works. If I wrap it around my little finger, because it kind of locks it in position a bit more and you can keep that stitch a little bit tighter. But as I say, do not worry about your tension at this point. So we're now going to form the six double crochet into the magic ring, into the magic circle exactly the same process as we did with the cheats way you've got that one loop on your hook we're going to go into the circle we're going to pick up the yarn and we're going to draw it through the circle so instead of a stitch you're working into the circle yarn around through the two loops we'll repeat that again because that was stitch number one into the circle pick up the yarn pull it through the circle, yarn around again and through the two loops, stitch number two. And you repeat that until you've got six stitches. So I'll do it nice and slow, but it's exactly the same process. So into the circle, pick up the yarn, pull it through the circle, yarn around the hook and through the two loops. I've now done four because I did do one of those quite quickly. I'm going to do number five. Can I just point out before I do any further as well, if you're using the proper magic circle, I did say you'll find that your yarn doubles up so you've got your tail end and you've got the circle itself. You are crocheting over both pieces of yarn there. Don't worry about that tail end. Don't think, oh, I'm trapping that. That's not going to work. Just go into the circle pick up the yarn, you can work over the tail end and the circle itself. Now I've got five stitches, I've got one more to do. So back into the circle, pick up the yarn, two stitches on my hook, yarn around through the two loops. So what you've got there are your six double crochet into your magic ring or your magic circle. This is where now you can tighten that up because we don't want to keep that hole. We don't want to see that on the bottom of the bag because things would fall out of it. We want to tighten that up. So all you need to do, and if you've done this correctly, you'll find it works first time. Take the tail end of the yarn and pull that up. You can see that circle then draws in. If I pull tight the stitch that's on the hook as well, can you see that circle? has now disappeared, that hole has disappeared. If I wanted to open it up again, I could do, I can sort of pull that open, but you just pull on the tail end of the yarn and that will close off that circle. We're now ready to start creating the base of our bag. That is your first row done. Now, if you've got a pen handy, you might want to make a few notes onto the patterns as you go as well. You may not want to, you may want to. It's entirely up to you. But we're going to move on to row number two next. Just to repeat what I said earlier as well, if you look at the brackets after each row, it will tell you how many stitches you should end up with. Okay? Now, we're going to move on quite quickly now. Once you get going, there's a pattern that emerges. Now, we have got some stitch markers on the show, but what you can do is take an odd piece of yarn of a different colour and you can use that as a stitch marker as well. I actually find this easier rather than kind of the safety pin type of stitch marker. So what we're going to do, we're going to continue working with the magic circle. So I'm going to put the yarn back around my hand ready to go. Now I've closed off the little circle. 
it will probably e be easiest, and it doesn't actually say this in the instructions, so you can write it down. I do sometimes do this, sometimes I don't, but you might find it easier to do one chain stitch before we carry on with this. So if you feel more comfortable doing it that way, you can. It just gives you a little bit more play with your stitches. So a chain stitch again is simply pick your yarn up and pull it through. Okay, there is another way we could do this. We could do what we call a slip stitch into the circle. So just so I'm not confusing everybody, I'm just going to take that one stitch out that I've just done. You can close the circle off fully by doing what we form, uh, call a slip stitch. And a slip stitch is simply, you go into your first stitch, which you might find is a little bit tight actually at the minute. So if you need, so I'll pull it open a little bit. You can do, I will explain what the stitch is in a second. I'll just get into there with my hook. I pulled mine really tight to show you. A slip stitch is simply go into your stitch, pick up the yarn, pull it through, and you pull it through both stitches. Let me just undo that because I'm going to just loosen off my magic ring a little bit, my magic circle, just to give myself a bit more play. This is the beauty of the magic circle. You can loosen it off, you can tighten it up at any point. So a slip stitch, if I just put that into that first stitch, there we are. Pick up the yarn, pull it through that stitch, and at the same time, pull through the other stitch that was there. So you don't wrap the yarn around anymore. If you want to avoid doing this at all, you can do it. It's not that important. It closes off the circle nicely, so it gives you a proper circle, but you can continue to work without doing that if you so wish. Um, if you're doing arigurumi, where you work in spirals, you tend not to bother doing the slip stitch. So if you're a little bit lost there, don't worry about it. Right, we are ready to start row two. Now row two says make two double crochet stitches into each of the stitches of the previous round. Pull that down so you can see that. You should end up with 12 stitches. So remember first row, you've actually got six individual stitches there. Now you can tell the stitches by looking at the top of them. It looks like a little V. Hopefully we can come in nice and tight. Let's see if we can, um, let me see if you can get in nice and close on this. We'll try and get a really good focus for you. There you are. So if I just tilt that a little bit, it's like a little V. That is one of your stitches. And because you've got a circle, if I just turn that round a little bit, you can see that continues all the way around. So your first stitch will be your first V. Now it's a good point now to use a stitch marker because it will help you see exactly where you're going. So what we're doing there, I'm literally, before I do any more stitching, is just lie that thread, helps if it is a different colour, lie it across my work there. I'm not going to work this into the work itself, it's just going to be caught in between the stitches. Okay, once you get going, this is a point now where if you need to just tighten up your yarn a little bit on your hand so that stitch on your hook is a little bit tight you don't want it too loose we're going to find our first v or our first stitch and you're going to take your hook this gets easier the more you do it the first one is always the hardest one to go with take your hook underneath that v i've only gone through one side there so you might have to sort of give that a little bit of a helping hand you're now going to make double crochets again. So we're repeating what we did before. We're picking up that yarn. Let me just take that off there so it's clear. Pick up your yarn. You're going to pull through the stitch that you've just gone into, leaving you two stitches on your hook. Yarn around your needle and pull through both stitches. So you're repeating the stitch from the first row. Right, I'm going into the same stitch again. Now I've only caught one side of my stitch there, but to be honest, it doesn't matter. I'm going into the stitch, I'll get both sides this time. I'm going to pull that through. So you've got that loop on your hook. So you're back to those two loops there. Pick up the yarn again and pull through. You've just created a double crochet twice into the same stitch. Crochet is very forgiving, so if you make any small errors, don't worry about it. There's a way we can fudge it. That's how we describe it. 
Okay, let's do it again, but we're going to do this into the second stitch. So look for your next V. Look for your next V, which is there. We're going to do exactly the same thing. You've got that one stitch, go into the V, pick up your yarn, pull it through. So you've got the two loops, yarn round hook, pull it through. Seriously, the first stitch is the hardest one. Once you get going, it gets easier and easier. I'm going to go back into the same stitch again because you want two double crochets in each stitch. Yarn round through both loops. We've now created four stitches in total, but we've only worked into two stitches because you work in two stitches into each. So we're now onto the third stitch. Again, you can see the V, exactly the same method into the stitch, yarn through, two loops on your hook, yarn round, pull through. So two of those into that stitch. I'm speeding up a little bit further here because I want to get further round. So I've forgotten how many I've done now. Is that three stitches I've done? I think it is. Uh, four, so two into this one, exactly the same. You're repeating the method. We've now got eight stitches because that was stitch number four. Stitch number five, exactly the same thing. Two stitches in there. So we're just going to keep pulling through. We're now to stitch number six, which is the final stitch. Now you can see why that marker is a really good thing to have because we can see that one stitch that's left and you can see where you began. So we're going to go into the final stitch, exactly the same thing, right the way through, pick up the yarn, pull it through. This one's again a little bit tight because it's the start and the finish of the loop. Why wasn't that pull through? This is why sometimes if you do that chain stitch at the beginning, it does actually help. So we've got the two loops on the hook, yarn round, pull through. Because we've already been in that stitch now, it actually loosens it off a little bit, so it makes it a bit simpler for the next one. And there you have, again, a double crochet. You've done your second round. The first round was the magic circle with the six stitches. You should now have 12 stitches, which it tells you in your brackets there because you've done two stitches into each of the first one. How long have we got left? We've got 15 minutes, great, okay, right. So what we're going to do now, where that stitch marker is, we're actually going to pull that out because it's, it's trapped between the stitches, but it will literally just pull out. So every time you start a new row or a new round, you're going to take that stitch marker out and you're going to reuse it. So before I do any further stitches, we're going to put that back into place. That is where we're going to end up. So you just lay it across your work from front to back and it will be trapped in between the stitches, but it marks where you start and finish. So at all points, you're going to end up with one stitch on that hook. We've still got the yarn across our hands. If you need to tighten that up a little bit, you can. Now this gets interesting and this is where the pattern starts to form. So I want to try and get at least two more rows in and then you should be able to carry on with your homework. So Row number three, it says make one double crochet stitch. We'll show you the details here on the screen in a second. Okay, it does give you that abbreviation, abbreviation again. So one double crochet stitch abbreviates to one DC, one double crochet. These are the abbreviations you will see in patterns. So I'll read that again. One double crochet stitch into the first stitch. Then there's a comma. The comma will separate your stitches. Increase one stitch in the next stitch. The abbreviation would be increase one stitch because you are basically increasing. This will make more sense when you see me do it. Repeat these stitches to the end. Now, if you continue reading, I'll skip a little bit for now, but you should end up with 18 stitches on the next row. So let's start again at the beginning. We'll, we'll work our way through the full instruction. So you've got your marker in place. Your first stitch is the first V. So you're going to use your hook again. So the instructions say make one double crochet into the first stitch. So you're using exactly the same stitch that you've already been using. So we're going to go into the V. We're going to pick up our yarn we're going to pull it through. So we've got the two loops on the hook, 
yarn around and we pull through. That is our first stitch completed. If I move on to the next instruction, it says increase one stitch in the next stitch. To increase a stitch, basically all we're doing is two stitches in one stitch. A little bit like we did on the previous round, we did an increase in every single stitch, but this time we're doing it in, in alternate stitches. So the first stitch, we've just done the double crochet. The second stitch, so the next V along, we need to increase that stitch. So exactly the same with a double crochet, we're going to go into the V. We're going to pick up the yarn and draw it through. So we've got the two stitches. Yarn round and draw through. That's one double crochet. We're increasing, so we're going to go into the same stitch again and do another double crochet. Now it's all going to start falling into place for you because the first two stitches we're going to repeat. So we're going to alternate these stitches. So stitch number three is a single double crochet. So in, when you pick up that yarn and you draw through, you've now done a single double crochet. Stitch number four, you're going to increase. So you're going to do two stitches. So it's one stitch, two stitch one stitch, two stitch, and you repeat that all the way around. I'm going to speed up a little bit because I want to get to the next row. So remember, one stitch, two stitches. Two stitches is your increase. One stitch, two stitch. And as you work your way around, if you're counting properly, and you're following this, when you get to your stitch marker, you will find that you will have 18 stitches in that round. So you've increased by six times. Okay, so one stitch, two stitch, hopefully. Right, so I'm to my last stitch now. I've just done a single. You should end up with a double crochet, two double, two crochets in the last stitch. It's the, the one where we're going to the stitch twice. So if, that, if you've fallen on two stitches on that very last stitch, there's a good chance you've got that perfectly right. There you can see that marker, that's where I began. That is going to be pulled out and you're ready for round number three. Now I do want to get this in because truly you will see the pattern emerging. Now I will, I know I haven't given you all of the instructions there, but basically what you've just seen is just that repeat of the stitches. One stitch, two in the next, one, two in the next, repeat that all the way around. If I just do go, to row number four, it does say make one double crochet into the first two stitches. Then we're going to increase. Now it is easy for me to show you this. So the stitch marker has been put back in position. We're still going to continue with double crochet. That's the only stitch we're using at the moment. So the first stitch we're going into the V. We're going to pick up the yarn. We're going to pull it through. So we've got the two loops. We're going to draw that yarn through. We're going to do a double crochet stitch. You've already been practicing this. You've already got that one. Second stitch, we're going to do the same stitch, a single version of it. So one stitch, but on the third stitch, we're going to increase. So just to make it clear again, the last round, it was a single stitch a double stitch, a single stitch, a double stitch. This round you're doing a single stitch, a single stitch, then a double stitch. So you're doing an extra single stitch. So I'm going to go into this one, which is our double. I've done two singles. I'm now doing two stitches into the same hole or the same stitch. What happens with this is the reason you do the increase and the double version is it will keep your work flat. It will start to grow and it will keep your work flat. If you're not increasing, you will start to form a little basket. That'll give you a clue as to how we form the side of the drawstring bag. So I've done the first three stitches. So it's back to a double crochet in the next one. We want two double crochets before we increase again. So you go a single stitch, a single stitch, and the next one, you're going to go twice into the same stitch. Now, what you will find happening here 
you'll see it more clearly as I get to the end. Although we call them rounds and we're creating what looks like a circle, you're actually going to be creating what looks like a hexagon. So let's do that again. We'll go next stitch, single, single, increase, a double. Now, if you're just following along there, I'm going to rapidly get to the end of my row because I, want, I can show you more clearly if I do this. So single, single, double. And then I'm going to do another row so you can really, really see the pattern forming. So continue round and you'll notice that on row number four, if you're looking at the instructions, it will tell you on row number four, when you do complete it, you'll get to 24 stitches. Every time you do a row, you will do an increased stitch six times. So you'll find that they multiply by six on every row. So you started with six stitches. The next row was 12 stitches, 18 stitches, 24 stitches. So if you're following correctly, once you come to the next row, you're gonna go up by another six. Yeah, you can see you should end up with 30 stitches. So we're on row number four, remember. I'm almost at the end of mine. Let me just see where I've gone. I can now tell where I'm working. I've got my double there. So I've got a single, a single, a double in the next one. I'm hoping we can get one more rounding because there's something that should show quite clearly once we get going a little bit further. So as I get to the last three stitches, I know it's fallen into place because it's a single, a single, and another double. You should end up with a double at the end of every round. So when you reach that stitch marker, you should find that your last stitch is a double. Now, can you see that is starting to form what looks like a slight, a slight hexagon? It's not very clear at the moment, but hopefully that will show up on the next row. Now, very quickly, I'm going to take that stitch marker out again. Now, you can follow along with me if you're keeping up. If not, watch this one uh, and watch it on rewind because I want to really point out how the pattern's starting to fall into place. Now, obviously, the last row, we went single, we went single stitch, single stitch, double. Single, single, double. So, because we, we're increasing again, this time we want three single stitches before the double. So first stitch, single, second stitch, single, third stitch, single. Now I want to increase so we've got that double. Now I'm hoping the camera can pick this up. You can see where the double stitches are. Can you, now hopefully you start to see a pattern emerging. If I can't get that bag over here, we can show you very clearly on the bottom of the bag. I will, yeah, we have got the bag, so I'm going to show you that in a second. I'm just going to very quickly work round here. So let me do the double into that stitch. If you lose your stitch, just pick it back up. So again, single, we're doing three singles before a double. Single, single, that's three, then the double. And I'm working my way around. And if I can do this very, very quickly, as I count and talk at the same time, you'll definitely see the hexagon forming a little bit more clearly this time. So three single stitches, then your double. Exactly the same stitch every single time. And the reason you get the hexagon is because you're increasing six times during the whole round of stitches. And it's where you're doing the double that you kind of get that little point emerging which forms the, the points of the hexagon. So three stitches there. If I lose count, I can see, yeah, that wants to be a double there. I was counting, but just, just to make a point. Okay, I'm almost at the end of this row. So I've got three more singles because I'm repeating the sequence there. Let's do those three. The last stitch before the marker, I know is a double. If I'm doing it right, it's always going to be a double. And if I lay that down, let's just take that stitch marker out. You can start to see, I'll pull that down a little bit. The hexagon shape is forming. If I do grab the bag, you can really see the pattern forming. So this is the magic circle. I just got, my yarn is a slightly different colour, but if I just place this over the top, you can see what's happening there. 
You can see this, the centre part, which is the magic circle. You can see where I'm working. You can see the pattern. It's almost like a spinning wheel in effect. You can see those lines coming out. They are all the areas where I've increased the stitch. You now continue with exactly the same pattern. So where I've just done three stitches in a double, the next row, four stitches in a double, then five stitches in a double, and you'll keep going until you get to the end of the instruction, which is line number, I'm going to ask you for homework, go up to, if you can, row number 14. Ignore 15, go to 14, and we'll pick up from there next week. If you do have any issues whatsoever, find me on Facebook, let me know. I do have a group, get talked with sugar buttons, find me there, send me a message, and I'll try and help out, and maybe put a little video tutorial or something on as well. But you can get this on Rewind, of course. I do hope that you've enjoyed that and you've understood it as well. Derek, back to you. It's been fascinating, isn't it? And, and I have to say, the TVs are all too far away because Catherine, Catherine needs to see what you can see because of all the close camera work. But I do have a long lane of, line of chain Brilliant. stitches. So you know what? I have made a good start, I have to Brilliant. tell you. Brilliant, that's your drawstring. But I'm left-handed as well. I'm left-handed. And you know what Perfect. that says? That's not an easy thing for, but I'm just getting my tension all sorted. Listen, you can still be part of this craft along as well. Even if you're coming along right now at the end of part one, Order your kit right now. It will be dispatched to you on Monday. So with you in plenty of time for next Thursday night's part two, you'll have a bit of catching up right the way up to line 14 in the instructions by then. But I'm sure you can absolutely do it. It costs just five pounds. And remember, you get three almost in un uninterrupted hours of fantastic tuition as well. Thanks for all the lovely emails <laughs> as well that have been coming through yes, thank um, you. in the last hour because you've absolutely loved it. I have as well. It's been a real, real joy to watch. So please make sure to check out your kit. Join in next Thursday at nine.